morning friends today is the second last edition of this special acns webinars and it is a great honor for me to introduce you to the first speaker of the day who is an italian jane the vice president of the international society of minimal invasive neurosurgery professor giovanni brogi professor brogi is the professor emeritus of von institute neurologico sebesta milano italy he was also the former continental chairman of the wfns he was the past president of the italian neurosurgical society and also the past vice president of the eans and essfn he is a great philosopher who has worked in the past with several neurosurgical giants like professor kenbull and professor yasujil he has been a visiting professor for more than 35 universities worldwide he has uh, co-authored and co-authored about 422 articles published in international scientific journals we are so grateful to professor brogi who has accepted our invitation for today to be a speaker at the acns webinars today professor brogi is going to talk about ibro approach the second speaker for today is professor stephy shaw professor shaw is an associate professor at the department of neurosurgery fudan university shanghai china he is a member of the neuroendoscopic committee of the cmda his special interests include surgery for invasive pituitary adenomas cushing disease and acromegaly we are so thankful to professor shaw to have accepted our invitation to speak up at our webinars professor shaw is going to talk about endoscopic endonasal approach for supracellular lesions and skull base reconstruction to chair the webinar for today we have a great legend from japan professor kentaro mori professor mori is the chief of cerebral stroke center department of neurosurgery tokyo general hospital tokyo japan professor mori was the past president of vast spasm society of japan his special interest in neurosurgery includes cerebrovascular surgery and keyhole neurosurgery professor mori is an integral part of the japanese neurosurgical society and he has published several articles in various neuro internationally reputed neurosurgical journals we are so thankful to professor mori to uh, have accepted our invitation to chair in today's webinar on behalf of the education committee of the acns and the president professor yoko kato i hereby welcome today's speakers professor giovanni brogi and professor sufi shaw to this online platform of uh, acns webinars we hereby also welcome professor kentro mori as the chair for this webinar Dr. Liu Bun Sang from Malaysia is my co-host for today, and with that introduction, may I please hand over the podium to Professor Mori. So shall I start? Shall we start the webinar? So I think uh, first speaker is Professor Brogi. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for this kind of introduction. So my my talk today is the <clears throat> minimally invasive uh, approach for the anterior skull base pathology, and uh, in particular the supraorbital eyebrow. <clears throat> I have to thank uh, all my collaborators and mainly <clears throat> not only the people of, uh, from the Besta, uh, Manfred Sabicher and Charlie Tio that are giving me some lecture and some uh, images for this uh, presentation. So no disclosure. The history. Uh, the first uh, sovraorbital uh, uh, subfrontal was done by Croze in, uh, in the beginning of the last centuries, at the beginning of neurosurgery. But, uh, and after you see uh, Poppen, Yashagil, Brox, uh, but was Perneski actually that developed this kind of approach. Uh, this approach is uh, through the incision, incision of the uh, of the abro and a small craniotomy. And the, uh, the anatomical structure that you can reach is, you see here um, enlisted. The only clinical application, okay. You can use endoscope, you can use a microscope without any problem. So the incision is this one. This is the, the opening and the only uh, the real danger or, uh, is that uh, here you have the sovraorbital nerve. So the incision has no to overcome the, the, the uh, foramen. And <clears throat> it can expand it also laterally as, as long as you like. <clears throat> Very important is this study done by, by Zuccarello that compare the three different approaches, uh, orbital zygomatic, supraterional or open perional, and uh, infra and sovraorbital alone. Sorry, let's go back. You see here that the, uh, the uh, vision that each of them is providing is not different. The problem is that you have to move the patient. You have to be very careful in, in opening all the system and cutting over the arachnoids. You see here 
the chiasma, chiasma and the two nerves. And, uh, uh, and that is something that you will find in the uh, normal operating room. <clears throat> Variant, you can use uh, a, a bar hole laterally or medially as you, as you like. I prefer laterally, I suggest that laterally is the best one. Uh, <clears throat> it can be done uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, what we did in, in Dean with the Manfred Tabisher is the approach of both sides. And you will see what that is what you can see uh, in the cadaver with the endoscope. But what is most important is this uh, short video in which uh, Manfred uh, show us that through this approach, you can reach the basilar artery. So uh, it's very convenient. Of course, in the cadaveric specimen, it is completely different than in the, in the human but the possibilities are this one. Limits. The anterior part is the cribriform from plate, a crista galli. The posterior one, a brainstem. The lateral, a sylvian fissure and the MCA bifurcation. The limit superior is the lamina terminalis and the, and the anterior communicating artery. In the contralateral side is the MCA bifurcation. That means that with particular situations that you have to plan in advance, you can go also on the other side. This is our experience. Three institute, 73 patients. Best in Sydney, these are. This is the, the characteristic of the, uh, of the pathology that we uh, uh, manage. As you see here, it's from meningioma to the dermoids, from uh, supra aneurysm and so. This is the other uh, two uh, institution. Uh, and uh, you see here again, meningioma, glioma, and uh, a, a tailored dysplasia and cavernous uh, angioma. One case, very simple. Uh, if the patient came with because of parasitic diplopia, disturbance of the foot and, and the MRI revealed the Chiarima formation, but also a ACM, uh, A1 ACM aneurysm. Uh, and of course, we did the angiography. You see here the Chiarima formation and you see here the, uh, the aneurysm. And that is what we did. I did actually. <clears throat> Opening is uh, uh, maybe is important to go back a little bit and to show you the opening. Okay, you see here the opening is very is very small, is more less than two two centimeter. <coughs> the opening uh, and the approach to the aneurysm is uh, as usual, nothing new. You see, the only thing is that you have a, a real very good corridor. And you have to do a sharp dissection with the cutting of all the arachnoids. And here you can expose the aneurysm. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> and of course, the clipping of the aneurysm was done as usual. Nothing new. You have the space to do it. The reason why I'm showing this movie this video is to show that you have <coughs> space to manage, to change the clip, to modify the position of the clip. And of course, ICG is mandatory for all vascular surgery, and not only for vascular surgery, to be sure that you are not closing the, the collaterals uh, and the parenteral uh, artery. The piece is very important because you have the branch that go to chiasma. And here is the closure. You see here, you suture the dura, and that is to close the borehole that uh, we did. And that is post-operative. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> you, go, you go home in the third post-operative day, and later on, the Chiarima formation was treated. Second case, uh, planus phenodialis meningioma. Here are the images. Planning. 
that is post op. That this one was before was pre op. Post op, of course, you see here pneumocephalus, meningioma is no more there. And here is a very short movie, short video, just to show again the opening as usual as the other way. And here <clears throat> you can start dissecting the, uh, the arachnoidal plate. No working. Okay. Of course, uh, the, you, as usual, you, you take out uh, as much as possible opening the system of uh, CSF. But the reason why I show you is not, uh, uh, not only the, the technical that is, as you see here, is without retraction. <clears throat> it's just the gravity that is making the retraction and um, tilting the table. And you can use also the ultrasonic aspirator. So it's not, there is no technical limit for this kind of uh, approach. You see here the delivery of this of, of, is a large piece, and again, coagulation. And, you know, the, the, the surgery is not different to what you are doing with the very large uh, craniotomy. The only advantage is that the craniotomy is very small, patient have no uh, problem that you have with large craniotomy, and the the uh, the. Uh, the uh, stay in the hospital is very short. Another um, uh, endoscope assisted uh, for recording the cranial pharyngioma. This is a, a video of uh, Charlie Tio. You see here the, the cranial pharyngioma, and you see how you can have space enough to use the endoscope and to use the instrument to take out the lesion. You see here the anatomy is perfect. And uh, the removal uh, being a recurrent should be complete. And after you, you can make a tour around uh, the chiasma and arteries and so. Let's go for uh, uh, inspection after removal of cranial pharyngioma. Again, uh, the problem of, uh, of large cranial pharyngioma is that rem remnant. And uh, if we can, uh, if we can uh, be sure that everything is, is, uh, is, is free of disease, let's go back. You see here, we go down. That's microscope. And after you, we put the right A1, Sorry, technically, I'm not very good. I'm, I'm better as a surgeon that uh, with the uh, with, uh, uh, print with video. This is just to show at the end uh, how you can inspect all the cavity. With a very, very delicate approach with the endoscope. You have to remind, but I think that everybody that uses an endoscope that it is a, is a very large instrument, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, you have to be sure what the tip is and where the the pivot of the instrument is is going inside of the brain. Another case uh, it, that was a recurrent atypical meningioma. You see here the meningioma, and but you see here. How many craniotomy this lady had? What what we do? We open another another way, uh, the frontal one, uh, with a lot of problem. So we decide to go eyebrow, and that's at the end. You see here 
that the uh, aesthetic view is much better with this incision than with the previous one. That, by the way, was done by, by the same team from where I are coming. Glia tumor. Here you have the tumor. And from this, this ah, sorry. And from, from this approach, we can take out this one, both with microscope or better with the endoscope. And that is the post-op. Taylor dysplasia, again, a similar approach, uh, 24 hour follow-up without com with complete control of the seizure. Complication, of course, we have uh, we have uh, complication. You cannot make any omelets without breaking the hex, and the surgery is this uh, has this limit everywhere. Mortality to patient uh, overall, but for surgical mortality zero. <clears throat> that means that they died for complication, post-op post complication of uh, pulmonary complication or, or thrombosis and things like that. Uh, worsening of the pre-op symptoms, zero. New deficit, only two. Diabetes insipidus in, in uh, two cases of uh, craniopharyngioma. Uh, and uh, the permanent morbidity due to the approach is light mid uh, paresis of uh, their abro or super superorbital hyperesthesia. That is because we stretch the uh, uh, superorbital trigeminal branch. <clears throat> in conclusion, the Soprovita KO approach is a very good for minimal invasive approach. It's allow a in intracranial exposure that uh, may leave silateral, but we say that also we can go in the other side um, with a minimal tissue traumatization with no need for brain retraction because you can use the uh, thinking out of CSF, you can use the gravity to have the, the brain that is going down. And it can be fully microscope, endoscope assisted, and also also all endoscope. It's to well tolerated by patient that, uh, uh, in, in at least in my experience, are always convinced that when you explain everything that you, you will not go inside of, of the of the skull. And I have to be very careful to say we are going to inside of the skull, but uh, you will not have any scar on the top of your head. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, Professor Mori. You are you unmute. You have to unmute, Professor. You are muted, Professor. <coughs> Kindly unmute. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Professor Grochi. Thank you. You are a beautiful presentation about a sprawl keyhole approach. So may I ask you several questions to uh, Professor Brogi? Can you hear me? Yes, Professor, you may, please. Yeah, I have several questions about the sprawl keyhole. Uh, first <laughs> is uh, Professor Brogi uh, presented that uh, case of uh, olfactory meningioma. Uh, it was successfully treated by supraorbital keyhole approach. But from my point of view, supraorbital keyhole approach is good to remove the pranum sphenoidal meningioma or parcellar meningioma, but uh, not, uh, uh, it's, a not a good, uh, it's not a good approach to remove the olfactory groove meningioma, don't you? you don't think so? Well, that's, <clears throat> thank you for, the, for, this, uh, for this question, for this observation. Actually, <clears throat> the limit is that is the crystal gallery. So yes. it has to be an olfactory groove meningioma that is, is on one side, more wide on one side. If it's the huge bilateral, <clears throat> it's very difficult to it's not difficult to take out the, the superior part of meningioma. The most difficult thing is to go down 
to the grove and to yes. be sure to get a Simpson one removal. Yeah. So I agree with you. That is a limit. Yes. <clears throat> I have the same uh, trouble. Uh, I tried to remove the upper <coughs> peak uh, groove many Jova near Sprague the keyhole, but uh, you know the over tree groove shows a depression in the anterior part of skull base. So I excluded uh, 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 over tree groove many Jova from the uh, indication of Sprague the keyhole. Thank you. And the second question. No, no I may, may make a, may make a, uh, a comment because uh, that's a for Gary. Uh, <clears throat> it's very important for this uh, minimal invasive approach to, to have a planning pre op. You cannot say that is an, as, a, as, as a plan of meningioma, I go in this way. You have to plan in advance because you have to be sure that you can see everything mainly <clears throat> in the superior part. So in the, your side, on the side of, of the surgeon, if the, the meningioma is, of any lesion is too big uh, outside of the brain, you have to change the approach. Uh, that is very important. The planning in advance is very important. Okay. Less important for the intra, uh, intraparenchymal tumor. But that is very important. The other trick <clears throat> is that you have to clean the the, the a superior part of the bone of the orbit because usually is undulated that you have to make flat. That's his two tricks that uh, for young people is very important. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question. Yeah. Uh, I have experience of 350 cases of sprogital approaches, but uh, I love this approach, but problem is that uh, we cannot uh, put in uh, put in uh, enough light into the deep uh, intracranial part. So, do you have any idea to improve the light intensity in the uh, deep cranial? The well, uh, uh, thank you again. That is very important because the deep with the microscope is very difficult to have a, a very good light. So. The, this is the reason why we are using uh, endoscope assisted. The, the endoscope may break more light than you can see. The, may, the, the most important things anyway in, for this approach, but for all, all other approach, is the future of uh, visualization. That means exoscope. With the exoscope, uh, you see much better. Uh, the uh, ergonomics for the surgeon is, is different. And uh, I think that the, 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 the young generation, the one that started with the endoscope and endoscope, the uh, visual brain uh, uh, synthesis uh, is the same. While with microscope and endoscope, the situation is completely different. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Mori and Professor Goji. Uh, it was an excellent presentation, Professor Boji. I would like to open this for the discussion among the audience because as we have finished, <coughs> we will take a few questions. Let me start with you. Like, uh, you let me start with my, myself. There was a, a, a clipping of aneurysm video you showed in your uh, yes. one of the talks, right? So do you advocate this method for ruptured aneurysm? You showed it for unruptured. For a ruptured aneurysm, do you advocate this method? Well, I have no experience with the rupture aneurysm, but um, uh, I know that uh, my friend Regli did it in, in Zurich, did it uh, a few of them. Uh, the only problem is that a rupture aneurysm has to be without uh, surrounding hematoma. Otherwise you get uh, in trouble uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the chiasma and with the, with the optic nerve. So I think that in case of rupture aneurysm is not a good uh, approach. And uh, the urinal approach is much wider, allow you much uh, elasticity in uh, changing uh, also trajectory. I remember what, uh, what um, Gaza Yashis was saying. Uh, when you, you try one, uh, one approach, it's not working, try again, not working, change the approach. Don't do the third time. So I think that is a lesson that we learned for many, many years. And I, I think that uh, in rupture aneurysm is much better than usual. Also mini 
Terriona. I like uh, what his name is doing. Thank you very much. Yes, may I call upon Dr. Liu Boon Seng? Dr. Liu? Hello, Hello Professor. Thank you for yeah? excellent lecture, Prof. I want to ask you, Prof, in the case of a patient with a large frontal A sinuses, uh, will you still go uh, supraorbital or you choose more lateral approach uh, in supraorbital technique? Thank you, Professor. Um, well, is if there is a, that is the, as I said before, you have to have uh, all the images in advance before choosing this approach. If there is very large, you can go laterally, but I think so that if the sinus are very large, it's much better to do uh, with a small incision, the uh, SAMI approach. That is the same craniotomy, but you go a little bit further up from the orbit. I think that uh, we have to be elastic. We have to change uh, uh, one approach to the other one for the interest of the patient. And also from the risk of ourselves in terms of uh, security and, uh, and success. Thank you, Professor. I would like to have the opinion of our chair, Professor Mori, on that. Professor Mori, what is your comment about uh, managing sinuses, frontal sinuses? Yeah. Uh... One of the uh, cons of the uh, strawberry uh, keyhole approach, we cannot reconstruct the open frontal sinus. You know, uh, to close the uh, front, uh, open uh, frontal uh, sinus, we need a pe uh, pericranial patch. Uh, but uh, in the case of the strawberry keyhole approach, we cannot get the uh, enough peri. Uh, very uh, cranial uh, patch. So if the uh, frontal sinus is so large, we had better avoid the supraorbital keyhole. It's my uh, opinion. Right. We, we are joined by one of the legends, uh, Professor Hirotoshi Sano. Professor Sano, I believe you have come late, but still we can have a few comments no. from you. About no, sinus. just I. I yeah, just I derived uh, to the to come the, to listen to here to the I I didn't uh, the, the I didn't see before just the uh, starting of your um, Dr. Morris uh, comment maybe next next one yeah Thank today I, I I I have no time to to listening yeah I'm, <laughs> I, I'm now driving to the from uh, Kawasaki to to Naoya. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining. Yes, Professor Hideito Kimura. Hi. Hi, thank you. Nice, uh, nice presentation. Hi, Professor Kimura. Yeah, so I have one question for you. So, uh, to perform the meticulous procedure intracranial dissection, I think about the fully endoscopic eyebrow approach. So in, in your presentation, you showed the so excellent uh, surgical uh, video uh, so to remove the tumor and also to, to apply the clip for the aneurysm, for the unnaptured aneurysm. So how do you fix the endoscope to perform the uh, meticulous procedure? Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm fixing it with the hand of my assistant. Oh, really? That is All the time. When we're using endoscope, it has to be four ends. Uh, now with the with the 3D you can use a holder, but the um, the holder is 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 taking out all the advantage of this meaning basic because it's yeah. fixed, and, uh, and you have to go around. The but most uh, important things is that uh, we are you are assisting or you are co-working because we are sharing the responsibility of that is moving and is seeing and is following what you are doing. So I, that's that's is. Uh, uh, is, is very important when the, the, the pathology is uh, so complicated, like the aneurysm or, or other things. By the way, the aneurysm was done by microscope. I did by microscope. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. the important thing is so communication to the, with the assistant is very important point for the speech surgery. Yeah. Anderson, thank you. Right. Thank you so much. So, I think, uh, can we please go on to the next topic then, Professor Mori? Professor Mori. So uh, let's move to the second topic today, okay? 
So, well, uh, second speaker is Professor Xu from uh, Shanghai. His talk is his to uh, topic is endonasal approach for supracellular tumors and reconstruction and of skull base. So, could you start your lecture, please? Um, hello, how are you, friend? I'm Dr. Shou from Shanghai, uh, Huasan Hospital and the Fudan University. Uh, thank <coughs> thank uh, doc, uh, Dr. Xu Bing uh, in my invitation for my lecture. <coughs> Today I will introduce our center for uh, experience of endoscopic nasal approach to remove the supercellular lesion and also the scar based reconstruction techniques. At first, uh, I will introduce some mm, the history of modern transphenal surgery. The pioneer of uh, transphenal surgery is uh, Dr. Harvey Cushing. And uh, <clears throat> last century, 1960 years, Julius Hardy is pioneer of the microsurgery for the transphenal approach. About 30 years ago, Dr. Hai Dong Zhou is the pioneer of endoscopic and nasal surgery. Uh, from uh, 2011 year <coughs> to last year, we have performed over 1,600 endoscopic and nasal surgery. <coughs> the most cases, the pituitary adenoma, over 1,000. In the 100 cases, and the 230 cases for the cranial lymphangioma, and also the cordomas and the meningiomas. <clears throat> and in this graph, we can see that our case of uh, endoscopic and nasal surgery goes gradually every year. And uh, the first part, I introduce uh, the, our surgery for the the uh, Karin Cushing said the cranial fragile is the most forbidding of intracranial tumors. And to investigate uh, the therapeutic effect of endoscopic and nasal surgery for the cranial fragile and we record 150 cases of cranial fragile about six years. Most of the patients are male from six to 71 year old. Uh, among the 157 cases, uh, about uh, 38 cases was performed by the standard uh, approach. And the most cases, about 119 cases, was performed by the uh, extended cranial uh, uh, fragile omelet surgery. Uh, there were several types of uh, classification to demonstrate the growth patterns of acrobic uh, cranial fragiomas. Uh, we use the uh, uh, UPMC cl classification uh, reported by the Kassam. Uh, pre infedibular type was 67 cases. Chance the uh, infidibility type was 31 cases, and the ratio infidibility type was 19 cases. Uh, also, two cases <coughs> located in the third ventricle. Uh, two neurosurgeons stand in the same side uh, of cooperating during the surgery. Both have a mini uh, monitor screen at the opposite side. The binocular four hands techniques was uh, uh, adapted with a scope and a suction in the right nostril and other instruments in the left, left uh, nostril. Uh, nostril uh, instruments are very fine uh, going through the nostril, make the manipulation of the deep side more easily. This is a transplanion transtube column corridor. Uh, 
the main ant 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 uh, advantages of uh, endoscopy and nasal surgery is a pre-monic view provided by the endoscope. We can <coughs> observe the, the, the tumor, uh, which was not blocked by the optic chiasm, and it's very easily to identify the pituitary stalk and the origin of the tumor, and easier to identify the protected superior, superior, superior of the uh, hyperphysial artery. And we uh, use the transplant typical corridor to resect the pituitary adenomas, corneophagomas, meningiomas, some other uh, tumors. This is the procedure of uh, a whole approach. Now let me uh, uh, introduce some cases. This is a female a patient 50 years old, suffering visual deterioration in the period for six months. And the MI shows uh, cystic lesion located in the supercellular region. And after we open the dura, we try to dissect the tumor capsule. The tumor capsule was adhered to the chiasm on the left pecan. Uh, we can very easily expose the original of the tumor. Mm, some small vessels can be preserved. So the pituitary stock can be protected well. The video speed <coughs> was uh, faster than normal uh, operation. Finally, the tumor was totally removed. And we tried to check the original site of the tumor. Okay. <coughs> now the second case, this is a, a male patient with uh, 59 years old, suffering visual deterioration for half a year. And uh, this kind of uh, tumor was trans uh, infambidural type. This is uh, a video. At first, we cut out of the arachnoid membrane. The tumor capsule was adhered to the Kaisan, and we try to find the pituitary stock. We cut the tumor capsule piece by piece. Uh, finally, finally, we found the, the tumor <coughs> tumor capsule can be totally removed, but the pituitary stalk is very thin and very difficult to preserve. Only uh, a piece of uh, a part of the pituitary stalk was remained, and uh, <coughs> so the ventricle was open. And, and this is the third case.
This is a 18 years male <clears throat> with CT scan shows calcification over tumor. And uh, the MI shows a very large lesion. Mm. Uh, this is a very difficult case because the tumor was uh, blocked by the chiasm. Uh, we just only very narrow space try to uh, expose the tumor. The tumor uh, was solid with calcification. So we, uh, we try to dissect the tumor border from the hypothalamus. The tumors adhere to the wall of the third ventricle. So it's a very difficult to find the border of the, the border between the tumor and the hypothalamus. And finally, the tumor was totally removed. This is a post MI after three months later. <clears throat> and this is uh, uh, another case for the pre infundibular uh, type. Uh, <clears throat> and the tumor is totally removed. This is a post MRI. Uh, this is a very interesting case. Uh, MI shows a lesion to consider region, but uh, during operation, we found. We cannot find the tumor because the chiasm and the uh, pituitary gland block the tumor totally. It's very difficult to find the tumor. So we just push the chiasm upward <coughs> slowly and try to find the very <coughs> uh, tiny tumor located in the subcell region, but in, actually the tumor is totally located in the third ventricle. And finally we totally removed it. And the post MI shows the tumor was totally removed. <coughs> All the results, uh, we uh, got the gross total removal of the tumor about 56% uh, uh, and uh, subtotal removal about uh, 13 percent. <clears throat> During the follow-up, uh, two tumor uh, recurrence, and we also use the super uh, orbital keyhole approach to remove the tumor. And there are some uh, com there were some com complications during the first uh, 90 cases. The post orbital CT uh, the C uh, CSF leakage uh, for three cases. And two case, uh, two patients were repaired under general anesthesia. Also, some uh, three cases for infection and one case for visual deterioration. Uh, we focus on the pituitary stock preservation. Uh, we try to uh, preserve the pituitary stock, uh, not only the anatomic preservation but also the functional preservation. So. <clears throat> About uh, seventy-four percent of the pituitary stock was preserved, and <clears throat> through the, this uh, kind of approach, it's very easy to clarify the relationship between the tumor and the pituitary stock, and uh, also it's very easy to got the gross total removal of the tumor. Uh, this is the first part of the uh, uh, disease, the craniofrangioma. And the second kind of the disease is meningioma. And during the late, late recent five years, we have performed 37 cases of the tumor column meningioma by the endoscope and the nasal surgery. And the most part of the case, we can see the <clears throat> almost uh, uh, tumor tissue was located in the lower part of the uh, uh, tuber column. So I think this kind of meningioma is very difficult to remove by the 
the superorbital approach because the tumor was lower. So we perform uh, the <coughs> endoscopic approach. Uh, about 30% uh, of the patients was, uh, got the to gross total removal. In some cases, uh, during the operation, we, it's very easy to identify the A1, ACOM, A2, chiasm, pituitary stock, and the SPA. Uh, I introduce uh, one case. This is a female patient with 55, uh, 50 years old, suffering visual deterioration for three years. A physical combination shows the VOS was 0.3 and the VOD was count the finger. And the coronal evaluation was normal. The CT and the MI shows a lesion located in the cerebral region. There's the operation video. We remove the cellar floor and uh, the tuber column and the plenum and expose the base of the tumor. We coagulate the base of the tumor and then also we use the CUSA to debiking the tumor. We, then we try to find the, the border of the tumor. The tumor would adhere to the chiasm. <coughs> also, uh, the right uh, A1. Uh, we keep the biking and try to dissect uh, step by step. The pituitary stock was preserved. So all the tumor was totally removed. The A1. <clears throat> So uh, we discuss, uh, dis uh, we have a discussion of uh, endoscope analysis approach for tuber column in geoma. Uh, for example, the traditional country uh, indication of uh, uh, endoscope analysis surgery is uh, the large size of the tumor, and the second, the vas vascular encasement of the anterior cerebral artery. The third is wide and the anterior dural attachment of the tumor. The fourth is the tumor calcification. And uh, the fifth is the lack of the sphenocyte pneumonitation. And now I, <coughs> we think the, this uh, five uh, country indication is not uh, the problem. We can try uh, overcome the, uh, the, this and got the uh, tumor resection, but <clears throat> if uh, some cases, some patient uh, with the later extension of the tumor, for example, in within into the cavernous sinus, uh, we think it's very good and it's not good for the endoscopic and laser approach. And now the last part of the disease is the invasive PT adenoma. Uh, we have uh, did a very, very case of uh, PT adenoma. So we just uh, in introduced one case. This is a 51 uh, male patient suffering with visual deterioration for four months. And the physical condition shows VOS was 1.0 and the VOD was uh, 0.25. <coughs> And the coronal examination uh, demonstrated the prolactin was uh, uh, high uh, lightly, and the uh, uh, testin uh, was uh, lower lightly. And the CT and the MI shows uh, in a uh, very large uh, lesion located in the cellar and the supercellular region. <clears throat> I, we think uh, this is a, a pituitary adenoma invading to the supercellular lesion. Now that is this uh, operation video. Uh, we expose the cellar floor and the tuber column and the, and the diaphragm. At the first, we uh, remove the uh, intracellular part of the tumor. And then we 
uh, coagulate the anterior intercarbonal sinus to uh, extend the dural window. Because uh, there's a very large part of the tumor located in the superior region. <clears throat> then we uh, keep uh, removing the supercellular part of the tumor. We keep uh, in, enlarging the dural window, try to expose the very high part of the tumor. We use suction. Uh, to remove the tumor very carefully. And we all know if, uh, if the, tum the pituitary tumor should be removed totally to prevent the post-operative hemorrhage. <clears throat> Finally, the tumor was totally removed. And after three days, we performed the uh, MI issues, uh, no remnant of the tumor. We also did uh, other cases for uh, invasive pituitary adenoma. <clears throat> and finally, we should uh, introduce our experience for the uh, skull based reconstruction. Uh, in our center, the overall risk of CSN, uh, CNS infection following the endoscopic approach was. Uh, 1.8%. <clears throat> so if the CS leakage uh, occurred, so <clears throat> and the infection rate was increased. And at first we uh, introduced the classification of the skull based defect, for example, traumatic, spontaneous, tumor related, and uh, intragenic. And uh, for our experience, the most of, uh, of the CS leakage was intraoperative leakage. And uh, we uh, <coughs> use the uh, uh, grading scale uh, according to the size of the derivative defect and then the, the volume of CS leakage. Grade one, just only a very little leakage. And grade two, the derivative defect was smaller than uh, five millimeter the obvious uh, cis leakage. The grade three, uh, the dural defect was larger than five millimeter with uh, <coughs> high volume cis leakage. <coughs> also, uh, there were three uh, key factors for the successful scar based reconstruction. The first is still the leakage definitely. We use only inlay and multi uh, <clears throat> approach to uh, seal the leak leakage. The second uh, key factor is support re reconstruction material steadily. <clears throat> For example, idle form causes and bloom. And third key factor is uh, diminishing the impact of the intracerebral pressure. Uh, For example, um, for the uh, hydrocephalus. We use post of the number drainage or VP shunt. Uh, this is a multi, uh, multi layer uh, reconstruction using the uh, uh, durogene. Uh, <clears throat> the first layer is durogene, then the second layer is autologous fat, and the third is a facial letter, and then the uh, fourth is a pedicle nasal septal flap. And we <coughs> support the flap with the idle form gosis. And <coughs> finally, we uh, have a summary, a summary of the uh, endoscopy and the nasal surgery for the supercellular lesions. We should uh, balance the benefits with the risk, and we try to uh, got, uh, try to get the maximal safe resection. <coughs> And the first, the initial surgery is very critical because uh, for this kind of lesions, the second and the third operation is very difficult to remove the lesion totally. 
And the third is the excellent exposure due to the endoscope that provides the most possibility for the complete resection of the tumor. <clears throat> and the fourth, the individualized surgery, surgical planning, planning is, very, is critical to balance the resection rate with complications. And we do not, uh, we do not struggle for a gross total removal for elderly patients because most of our uh, lesion uh, grow, grows uh, slowly. And also radiotherapy is recomm recommended for adults with residual tumor after surgery. And the gross total re removal should be encouraged for the pediatric patients due to a high re recur recurrence of rate. And close follow-up is recommended for the little remnants. And finally, a history of a previous surgery or, and a radiotherapy is unfavorable for surgical results. That means the second surgery and third surgery is <clears throat> not uh, very easy to got a total removal. And thank you for your attention. This uh, is our experience for Huasan Hospital. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Shaw. Uh, you showed a very beautiful cases, and uh, uh, you have a bunch of cases you experienced a lot. And yeah. uh, surgery, uh, especially surgery for the cranial pharyngioma, were very beautiful. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I have several questions about the uh, reconstruction of the skull base. Because uh, uh, in Japan and uh, any country, many neurosurgeons nowadays oh, use an endoscope to remove the cranial pharyngioma or other kind of skull-based tumors using the extended uh, endonasal surgery. However, the uh, post-operative CSF uh, linolea is not negligible. You mentioned that According to your data, only 1.3% of the patient shows a post-operative CSF leak. So uh, you, you mentioned uh, you use uh, 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 artificial dura and you also use a, a balloon and uh, sometimes you use a nasal septum uh, flap. So my question is that, do you use a nasal flap in all cases of extended endonasal surgery, or what, uh, uh, when do you use a nasoceptal flap to reconstruct the skull base? Please. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's a very big problem to uh, stop her the CSF leakage after operation. So at first, uh, uh, about at first uh, ten years, we use. Uh, for extended uh, uh, surgery, every case we use the nasal septal flap. Uh, and uh, just uh, recently, recent uh, two years, uh, we try to use uh, the middle turbinate flap. That means not a pedicle flap for some relative uh, small uh, uh, that defect. For example, a small cranial pharyngioma, a small supercellular lesions, we use uh, the middle turbinate flap. The middle turbinate flap is uh, relative, uh, have a small size, and we, we uh, but it's also very good for the relative uh, small, smaller defect. But the, however, the, for the larger defect, and also we use the uh, uh, nasal septal flap. And uh, at the uh, uh, early stage, every case we did the lumbar drainage for seven days. And recently, uh, we only did the lumbar drainage for some, uh, some special patients, for example, uh, supercellular hemorrhage or hydrocephalus or some fat, very fat uh, patients. Uh, 
the most patients, uh, we did not do, did the lump drainage. <clears throat> and uh, this, uh, I think our ex, uh, experience is very successful, successful because if the leakage mm. occurred after operation or after the departure of the uh, patients, every patient will return our hospital to to go to the, the second operation. So uh, I think uh, every uh, 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 construction several layers. Uh, now uh, I think we we have uh, overcome the, the very difficult problem. Okay, thank you very much. One more question. Uh, may I ask one more question? Yeah, sure. Why not? You 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 mentioned that only two two cases recurred after cranioparyngeal surgery. I think it is too little. I think. So how many years uh, do you follow up the cranioparyngeal patient? Uh, it's a very good uh, question because uh, uh, in our this uh, this. Uh, uh, PPT, a PowerPoint uh, slide, uh, the data was not uh, renewed. Actually, uh, I think uh, if the cranial pharyngioma cannot be removed totally, and uh, the recurrence is, cannot be uh, uh, prevent. So, uh, for example, if the, uh, during operation, we, we ensure that the, the tumor cannot be removed, and we will follow up the uh, patients uh, one month later, three months later, six months later, and one, uh, 12 months later. And if uh, the tumor have, have a, a, a little recurrence, we suggest, uh, uh, we recommend, recommend to the patients to the gamma, gamma knife or uh, Cyber knife for uh, radio surgery, so uh, so uh, most of the uh, recurrence uh, tumor can be uh, controlled by the uh, early stage. And oh. Only a very uh, a small uh, uh, um, a number of the tu uh, tumor should be uh, removed the, the second time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So, thank you, Professor Mori, and thank you, Professor Zerkisho. It was a wonderful presentation. Just, I would like to uh, ask one question: Is uh, who does the nasal part in your place? Is it the neurosurgeon or the ENT surgeon? Uh, neurosurgeons, because uh, in our hospital, neurosurgical department is a very uh, large family. We have over one hundred fifty neurosurgeons. The, an ENT department is a very small family, so only we, we did everything by myself, by ourselves. Okay. So okay. regarding one more flap, you said the middle terminate flap, you said, and mm -hmm. it's a very interesting flap. You just cut the terminate and put it over the space. Is that, is that how you do that? Yeah, yeah, we, we did the, the flap by myself. No, no, I'm asking about the middle terminate flap. How do you do it? With the tube in the flap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you use uh, the flap for. So how, how do you do it? Just do you cut the terminate and place it over the <coughs> gap? We, that... we cut the, the uh, middle tube in it and uh, remove the concave of the, 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 the tube in it. We use just only the flap, the flap to, to cover the defect of the scalp. Okay, right, perfect. Professor Broji, would you like to comment something? <laughs> you are a wonderful presentation and very large experience. Uh, for the extent of the in, in, uh, many, uh, approach to meningioma, uh, do you think that it's very important to, uh, to measure in advance the distance in between the carotid artery? Because I think in my experience, this is a, a huge limit. And, uh, and sometimes it's making you in trouble because uh, the, the risk of uh, damaging the carotid artery is, is quite high if you won't be uh, uh, 
to, to achieve a total removal. What is your, this is the first question. The second question, more clinically, uh, if you, uh, when in the craniopharyngioma, do you prefer radical removal uh, and lose this talk or you prefer to, uh, to preserve the stalk and leave a remnant? Generally, I mean, not a single case. <laughs> Uh, thank you, doctors. Uh, yes, uh, the most of the tuber column in Geoma we choose uh, is uh, the, the, the main body of the tumor was the lower, you mean it's lower, uh, it's under the skull base. For this kind of the tumor, uh, the transorbital approach is a uh, very difficult to expose the, the base of the tumor. So for this kind of tuber column medium, we use the endoscopic and the nasal approach to, uh, to uh, expose the base of the tumor and to debike the tumor. Uh, and for, for example, for other kind of uh, tuber column medium, the, the tumor was located in the supercellular region very high we use the uh, 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 transorbital, a uh, superorbital approach so for keyhole approach. And the second uh, question is the uh, cranial uh, uh, we try, uh, we just uh, uh, use the uh, uh, classification of the uh, cranial phygioma. For, if the, the tumor was original from the stock and uh, the stock was just, uh, uh, was, uh, I think it was intact. And so the, this kind of tumor can be removed <coughs> without, uh, uh, without satisfying uh, satisfy the, the, the stock. And, but uh, recently, uh, the most of the case is uh, the, the stock uh, is uh, that means the uh, trans uh, infibular type. That means the, the tumor was uh, located inside the stalk. The, uh, the tumor was the inside, and the stalk was uh, the surround part of. It. So it's very difficult to preserve yeah. the stalk. If you preserve the stalk, the main, that means the, the tumor recurrence rate was very high. Yeah. So. For this cut of the tumor, we just cut off, cut off the stalk with uh, the tumor capsule. Uh, we remove it uh, together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Ajit Arnair, would you like to say something? Professor Ajit Okay, Nair. I have a, a question regarding the doing a very large pituitary adenoma. Whenever we do, uh, when we take the uh, tumor, the whole arachnoid will sometimes uh, come into the field, preventing taking the more anterior part. And whenever you try to push the arachnoid inside, many a times arachnoid will get uh, damaged. So my question, what is your strategy if the arachnoid prematurely come into the field, uh, into the cellular opening? What is your strategy in uh, removing the tumor? Yeah, yes. For some very large pituitary tumors, at first we remove the intracellular part and the diaph diaphragm descend. You cannot yeah, have yeah. Yes, yes. both the supercellular lesion. And then we okay. use uh, just try to put up a word, try to put up a word to find the, 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 the color of the, the tumor. But uh, if you the, the, the tumor is too large. We, we can you cut off the diaphragm, release the CSF, and the so the pressure was at, uh, was down, and then we can keep removing the, the remaining part of the tumor. Also, we look the the second operation. We can cut open the tub uh, tuber column dura, and to do the operation. Uh, trans cellular to extend the, uh, the approach. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, my nice. friend Liu, would you like to ask something? 
Yeah, thank you, Professor, for a very nice lecture. I uh, just want to find out from you the limitation of uh, endoscopic endonasal surgery in terms of uh, age group, pediatric age, which age group that you think that is not suitable for uh, EES. And another thing is how much classification that you think that definitely you won't go through this uh, uh, corridor. Thank you, Professor. Uh, you mean uh, how many? What is the age group? Age group, pediatric age group, do you recommend transplantal surgery? Uh, age group, we did uh, uh, from the six years old uh, to the 71 years old. From the children to the elderly patients, uh, we have, uh, we did uh, the most of the patient was elder, adult patient. So does it mean that anybody who are younger than six years old, you won't go through this, you go transcranial for pediatric age? Uh, because uh, if the, the children patient is too young, uh, mm -hmm. of course, uh, the younger than the six years old, okay. uh, because the nasal corridor was too small. Yes. Uh, so we used uh, we did the open surgery. Uh, second, my question, second question is how much classification in cranial pharyngioma that you, you think is not safe to go through uh, uh, endonasal approach, Professor? Mm. Uh, uh, at first, we use the some oh, classification. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, I, I, I see. Because some cranial pharyngioma, uh, for the, I, I mean, I introduced my fourth uh, case, the, class, uh, the classification of the uh, uh, tumor was very diff very difficult to remove. So sometimes we, we use CUSA uh, uh, to try to uh, you mean screw the 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 bony uh, part of the tumor. Uh, so I in my uh, uh, in my uh, uh, experience uh, only uh, some uh, maybe. Uh, one percent of the tumor was a uh, classification tumor, and uh, if the tumor was uh, the bony part of the tumor was very large, we try we try to uh, divide the the classification into pieces with CUSA, then we removed it into uh, piece by piece. Uh, the, so the uh, the surgery is very long and also very dif difficult to remove. And uh, if the two, uh, bony or part of the tumor is too large, we stop the operation because it's too dangerous for this kind of operation. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we'll take one last question. Professor Ajit Sinha, please be short. We are running yeah. out of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was an excellent presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, my question is to Dr. Brojing. Yeah. Uh, can I ask one yeah, question sure. to him? Why not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very impressive uh, presentation and work. Uh, I just wanted to uh, put one comment that uh, he had put the limit, anterior limit as uh, the Krista Galai. Uh, actually, I, I do use this approach and uh, by using the angled endoscope, uh, I can. I think uh, we can reach easily till the uh, till almost the posterior wall of the frontal sinus. Why? Because uh, I do use this approach for uh, CSF leak repair, uh, leak repair through the frontal sinus, posterior wall of the frontal sinus. So uh, the same opening, same craniotomy, but uh, to increase the limit of uh, visibility, uh, I use the forty-five degree endoscope. Uh, and uh, that increases. That, so that was the comment. I just want to uh, know his opinion about this. Well, <clears throat> this, uh, this is a very good suggestion to use a uh, angle retained endoscope tool. I think that, as I say before, that the limit of this approach has to be planned in advance, but with uh, angle uh, with uh, with the uh, angle retained endoscope with. Uh, uh, tilting the table, tilting this way, uh, changing the, the, the way of seeing, uh, you can really uh, reach uh, uh, more than the limit that I put. 
Anyhow, thank you for your for your question because it under emphasized the use of endoscope. Endoscope alone, most, and at least for my generation, endoscope assisted uh, surgery. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Ajitsina. We'll go back to Professor Mori for his uh, last con con conclu concluding comments. Professor Mori. Uh, I think it's time to close our, our beautiful session today. So I would like to say thank you to Professor Broji and Professor Shaw, uh, such a wonderful presentation. We learned a lot tonight. So thank you again. It's my comment, uh, uh, final co words. So, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. So I'll much. close this officially uh, on behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President, Professor Yuko Kato. I would like to sincerely thank today's speakers, Professor Giovanni Broji and Professor Soife Shaw and the chair, Professor Kentro Mori, for coming here <coughs> and teaching us about their respective surgical specialities. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Liu, for joining. So until next Saturday, it is bye-bye from all of us. Thank you all who joined. Thank you, everybody.